Passion creates productivity. Now, to some extent, we all want to be productive. Just maybe not all to the same extent. We all have a, a desire to get things done. I think. I think we do. I think we do. I think whether it's at, at home or whether or not it's at work, we all, got, we all got things we got to do when we go home, right? It's like, man, we got to go home and, 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 and we got to do this and I want to do this and we got to do this. And then you say, I got to go to work and I have this project, and I got that project, and I got this project. Maybe with your families, you have this, uh, you have some, uh, a, a desire to do something, right? We all have the to-do list, right? It's the laundry list that nothing ever gets done. I think if I said, how many of you all have a to-do list? You'd all raise your hand. And if I said, how many of you are effective in getting all the things on your to-do list done? You'd say, well, probably not very many people. We all have them. We all have these, these 10 or 20 long items of things. We've got to do this. Uh, whether we have, we, have to, we have to paint the door, we have to mow the grass, and we, we, we go down this whole list. We all have a desire to get things done to some extent. We all want to see a result. And what passion does is it, it creates productivity. It creates productivity. And that's important. I think we were created in the image of God. I know we were created in the image of God. And when I look back at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says this, that, and God said, let us make man in our image. You know what? For the first 25 verses of Genesis, God had been creating and he had been productive and, 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 and even efficient in what he was doing. He, was, he had passion behind what he was doing, didn't he? Now, does it say that in the, in the Hebrew? No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't. I could tell you that, and then you'd have to just go, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it says it right there in the Hebrew in, in verse 4. Passion. No, it doesn't. But we know that he had passion. There was an excitement to create the world, to create the universe. And his passion drove productivity. It made him to get things done because he was excited about it. Now, I think that while we all, to some extent, want to get things done, some of us are lazy. And uh, I can be lazy with the best of them. It's not easy for me to be lazy, but sometimes I can be lazy, right, honey? Sure. See, she's not agreeing with me. She's not agreeing with me. Max, you can be lazy? Oh, yeah. Can you? <laughs> really? Is this true, Beth? Lazy begins with an old western. I'm going to make a note of that real quick. <laughs> Usually when an old western comes on, it turns off. <laughs> because I don't do those black and whites. I just don't believe in them. I think it's not found in the Bible. <laughs> passion is a powerful thing. Passion is a powerful thing. The more passion that a person has generally, the more that's going to be produced. When you find someone who has a passion for what their purpose is, you're going to find someone striving, someone working hard, someone who is, is literally turning the world upside down. As a matter of fact, in Acts 17, we see a story, a record of someone turning the world upside down up until this point. In Acts 17, we see Paul on the scene in Acts chapter 9. He gets converted. Guy gets gloriously saved. We see his first missionary journey start shortly thereafter that. His second missionary journey starts in chapter 15 and goes through 18. And we see him literally in the Roman Empire, all of Asia Minor, preaching the gospel of God. He is literally out there preaching nonstop, trying to reason with people out of the scriptures. It says this, beginning in verse 2, And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks and 
a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few, but the Jews which believe not. Here you go. You have some Jews now. You got some people who are moving with envy. They're angry. They're upset. They took unto themselves certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and, and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying. Now, this is what they're saying. They, they bring out these believers. And here's the testimony of Paul's passion. These that have turned the world upside down are come hitherto. Now, that's amazing. Why is it that Paul did what he did? He had a goal, he had a purpose in his life, and he had some guts behind it to get out and get the job done. He had a passion. Now, a person can have a purpose and essentially have no passion and get nothing done, but the passion is the motor that propels it. That's what gets it done. It's a desire. And friends, when we talk about purpose in our lives, we also ought to have passion. There, there, there is, in general, apathy for Christ. There's apathy. Apathy is, well, I don't really care. And there needs to be excitement. And we're going to talk about the persuasion in just a moment. Passion is powerful. We look at the Apostle John and what he did, and the Apostle Peter and what he did, and we look at the testimony of all the disciples in the Scripture, and what you find is you find a soul-stirring burden to win the world for something, for someone, an excitement. And, and man, it's just, it, it changed the world. Literally turned the world upside down because of his passion. You know, the people who do things in America on a secular level are not the ones who are the, the proverbial, what do you call them? Oh, bump on a log. They're the ones out there who are who are the pace setters. They're the market makers, the ones that get out there and, and hustle. Those are the ones that get it done. And when we think about our purpose in life, when we think about our goal, what is the end result? What's over there? The way that I get from here over there is not by staying here. It's by, it's by moving along a line and being excited about something and having passion in your life. What was it that the, all these men had in common? When it, comes to, when it comes to faith, when it comes to purpose, what is it that all these men had, had in common? They were moved by God. And essentially, they all saw God's miracles work firsthand. They, 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 they were so turned on by this because they could see God and they, 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 had a, they, they, they felt Him in their life and they were moved so deeply by it that they couldn't stand still. That it would have been an offense and, and, and it, would have, it would have brought reproach. The Son of God moves in your life and you don't move. These people, these men and women of the Scripture and men and women throughout all the past, they were so excited about God. And isn't it true, even to this day, that when you experience God in your life, you are moved passionately. When you see God do something in your life or in other people's lives, it moves you passionately. Passion is so powerful in our lives. We need to get a handle on this. We can't, we, can't, we can't remain silent anymore. There's a lot of apathy. And I'm saying in the church, not just this church. And I'm not even saying this church. I think that this is a great church. But I'm saying that the church as a whole has become apathetic. Where people aren't really excited and aren't 
forthright, aren't bold proclaiming the gospel. Passion has to be proper. Not only is passion powerful, but passion has to be proper. It has to be properly placed. Now, this is important. We need to make sure that we rightly apply our passion because improperly allocated passion, listen to this, may result in unproductive effort. If you put the emphasis in the wrong area, if you're excited about the wrong thing, the wrong thing gets done. When I think of um, efficiency, when I think of productivity, when I think about that to-do list, right? We all have a to- I think we all have a to-do list. You all have a mental to-do list anyway, right? Say, nod, yes. Yes, okay. You all have at least some desire and something penciled down. And I've talked about this before, that my wife is the queen of this. She'll actually put stuff down on her list to cross it off, even though it's been done. But we won't bring that up again. I like, it. I like to know what it is I need to be doing. So, so we have lists, right? So let's just say, for instance, we have 10 items on this list. This is called the 80-20 rule. I've mentioned this before, too. The 80-20 rule. And that is that, that 80% of the effect is result of 20% of the effort. Or better put, that 20% of the effort produces 80% of the results, right? So the passion has to be in a smaller area for this big list, and you get more done. And so if we are emphasizing, if we are putting our passion and our heart's desire, and we are really working on something that really is not going to have a bottom line effect, then what are we doing? We see this when it comes to salvation. We see this when it comes to salvation, right? We, we, we have this, this desire, I think it's put in us, to know God. So what do we do? We, we, we go to church, we, we, we pray, we look out into the heavens and we see that there must be a God. And we try to do all of these things, we try to do all of these things that might somehow manifest or create merit for us to God, right? We, we are trying to do the best that we can do. So our passion is doing the best that we can do. Which if we're doing the best that we can do, we're not applying our passion in the right area because it's not about what we can do, it's about what God has done. A lot of people say that. Well, I'm a pretty good person. I go to church a lot. And that's all well and good, and we should be doing that. I, th- I think that being a good person is good. I think that going to church a lot is good. But if our passion is, is, is forced into this idea that it's, it's, in the, it's, it's in us, then we have a problem. And that's where these are great verses in Romans 4. Or Romans 4 uh, verse 4 says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. This is the, I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps kind of mentality. This is, I'm going to put a whole lot of emphasis and a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of passion in an area that doesn't produce anything. Have you ever tried to lift yourself up by your bootstraps? It doesn't work. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. We have to make sure that our passion is in the right area, and that's where the second verse comes in, verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith, his faith is what's counted for righteousness, not his work. The passion has to be in the right area. And when our passion is in the right area, it can produce the right result. We have to have properly placed passion. It has to be properly placed. And then we can have productivity. Something can happen that's worthwhile. 